YNW Melly is currently facing a death penalty. His reaction says it all. Really? Really? On June 12, 2023, YNW Melly walked into the 17th Judicial Court Inn in for Broadford County, Florida. He sat beside his lawyer awaiting trial. Melly had been accused of first degree murder and was waiting to receive his sentence. But the real news is, he was seen exhibiting strange behavior in the courtroom, which could even be used against him. What did he do? And how did he get here? Thomas went by YNW Juvie, and Williams went by YNW Sack Chaser. A fourth member, Cortland Henry, went by YNW Bortland. Prosecutors say on October 26, 2018, the four men left a recording studio together at 3.19 a.m. They're seen on surveillance video getting into a gray SUV. Melly and his homie YNW Bortland are in some serious trouble, man. They're both 24 years old now, and they're going to court in Broward County. They're being accused of some messed up stuff that went down back in 2018. Back when Melly and Bortland were just 19, some really bad stuff happened with their friends, YNW Sack Chaser and YNW Juvie. It all went down in South Florida on a specific day. The details are messed up, bro. But right now, we're all focused on the trial, trying to figure out what really happened and get some justice. The cops started investigating the case and things got crazy. The story they originally told started falling apart the evidence they found raised some doubts about what they were claiming. Turns out, there's no proof of any gunshots where they said they happened. Nobody reported any shooting in that area. And when they checked the phone records and videos, it didn't match up with what they were saying about where Demons was before the shooting. On February 12, 2019, they caught Henry in Texas and brought him back to Broward County. Demons, on the other hand, surrendered to the authorities in Broward County the next day. All these crazy details make this whole thing a wild ride, man. Demons and Henry are now facing charges for supposedly being involved in these messed up incidents that caused the death of Williams and Thomas. It's a really heavy situation, no doubt. But hold up, before we get into the real heavy stuff, make sure to subscribe quickly if you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to where we left off. Melly's first run with the law was when he was 16 in high school. Damn. He carried two pistols with him everywhere he went in case anyone crossed him. And someone did cross him, which led to a shootout. Although nobody was hurt, he was charged on three accounts and was expelled from school. He could have gotten at least 10 years for his charges, but somehow Melly was released. After his release, he figured he had to change his ways and live wisely or lose his dreams forever. Well, that statement didn't age well. While he was in jail, his mom linked up with his manager to find a way for them to push Melly's songs. It was during Melly's time in jail that he freestyled Murder On My Mind to his fellow inmates, which eventually became one of his biggest hits, but also Nemesis. As he continued to post songs on SoundCloud and YouTube, he gained fame. By the time he officially released Murder On My Mind and Slang That Iron, he got co-signs from Future and Young Thug. Things were already looking up for the young rapper. Or were they? After coming out of prison for the high school shooting, he released the music video for Melly the Menace, which garnered over 50 million views. Now, we would assume Melly stayed out of trouble after all he had been through. But against all odds, he ended up in court again. And this time, he is being accused of killing his childhood friends and fellow label partners, Anthony Williams, also known as YNW Sack Chaser, and Christopher Thomas Jr., AKA YNW Juvie. The case has been in court for four years, and it now seems like the rapper is running out of luck with his legal team. At his court trial, the prosecution opened the case by insinuating that Melly was a cold hearted killer. The prosecutor went on to narrate the scene of the incident. Around 3 19 a.m., YNW Melly, Sack Chaser, Juvie, and Boltner were seen entering a gray SUV. Shortly after, YNW Boltner ran into an emergency room narrating a story. He said they had been the victims of a drive-by shooting, and Sack Chase and Juvie were dead and riddled with bullets. But YNW Melly was nowhere to be found. 
The prosecutor also had an Instagram message, which she claimed was a confession to the crime. The message reads, Yo, homie, you good? Let me know something. It was sent by somebody who genuinely wanted to know how Millie was doing after the rapper replied with, I did that. Right after this, Yo, homie, you good? Let me know something. And so, ladies and gentlemen, this is where context matters. What does that mean? David Howard, Melly's attorney, took the dock in defense of his client. He started by letting the state of Florida know that they had zero cases against the rapper because they lacked substantial evidence. Well, basing your argument off a text message and adding your own context to it isn't exactly the best strategy. Mr. Howard went on to talk about the lead detective of the case, Detective Murray. The attorney alleged that Detective Murray placed his focus on YNW Melly as the lead suspect of the case because he's a star. And when you're investigating a star, you automatically become a star, which isn't far from the truth. Then he discovered that Mr. Demons was a rising star. And from that point on, he decided he's the only person that could have committed this crime. Because if you're involved in prosecuting a star, you become a star. This was his big break. Truly, the more the detective investigated, the less he found. So he contacted the Broadwood County Sheriff and asked for his help on the case. After the sheriff went through the case files, he knew they had to start investigating again from scratch because everything seemed off seems to have botched this investigation and they call the Broward Sheriff's Office and ask them to come and look at the investigation upon which this entire prosecution rests. And he looks at it and he says he instantly knew he had to start from scratch. As the trial proceeded, people began to pay attention to YNW Melly's expressions. For somebody who is likely going to face the death penalty, he was a little bit chill. Not a little bit. He was way too chill. Almost like he had nothing to lose. Or he's so sure that he's gonna walk free. According to the defense, there's no motive behind the murders. So, really, what's the justification? In the outside world, people have been expecting YNW Melly to fold under all these accusations. Which, to be frank, isn't far-fetched. <clears throat> Before the trial commenced on the 12th of June, 2023, he stepped into court in high spirits. He had a huge grin on his face. After taking his seat, he covered his face to say a prayer before blowing a kiss into the air. Really? Really? Nobody understood why he did that, but the jury was watching his every step and just one wrong expression could be enough to put him away for a long, long time. And to be fair, the tables are already against him. So the least he could do is act right. As the trial proceeded, the prosecutor Bradley made a case. The rapper looked uninterested. He kept fidgeting with his pen and looking around the courtroom, seeming to study the faces of everyone present. While other people would interpret that as guilt, I interpret it as anxiety. Let's not forget that the rapper has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. So it's already hard for the rapper to focus, especially in a controlled environment like the courtroom. Yeah, I am. Yeah. So you are by yeah, ADHD. Damn. So, so when you were coming up, did they like put you on Ritalin and shit? Hell yeah, when I got like the first time a year straight. So you was on like Addies and shit? Much straight, yeah. Adderall, baby. Yo, that's crazy. Cause Adderall is like legit meth. Yeah, for real. That's, that's the why thing. I I ain't doing you could do Adderall and like you could literally have the most productive week of your life. Down the line, YNW Melly and his female lawyer were seen to begin chatting and chuckling in court. What were they discussing? We don't know. But the smile was soon wiped off his face when a gun expert began talking about the different types of guns that were likely used in the murder of Sack Chaser and Juvie. 
However, the gun expert, George Bello, wasn't able to ascertain which exact type of gun was used to kill YNW Sack Chaser and Juvie. Neither has enough evidence been found to incriminate YNW Melly as the killer. But the prosecution were not going to back down easy as they soon brought one of Melly's ex-girlfriend's mom up to the stand to testify against the rapper. Surprisingly, she accounts that she was threatened by the prosecution with jail time. So the judge dismissed the witness and came to the conclusion that the jury was tainted. We were served with a subpoena in February of 2019. You never served me. I know you served at your location. I, never, I didn't live that anymore. Do you recall coming to the courthouse in February of 2019? Objection. Beyond the scope. Outside the courtroom, the late YNW Juvie's father spoke to the Law and Crime Network. He said he's sure that YNW Melly and Bortland are the perpetrators in this case. Melly was responsible for my son's death on October 26th when I first heard the story because his explanation, when I finally talked to him and Cortland on a FaceTime, their response and how they were reacting, they showed no remorse. They didn't act like they were grieving, like they lost a best friend or nothing. They was, in, in my opinion, they was in the best spirits. He said, and I quote, when I finally talked to Melly and Cortland on FaceTime, their response and how they reacted, they showed no remorse. They didn't act like they was grieving, like they lost the best friend or nothing. And in my opinion, they were in the best spirits. They never came to town, never came to my son's funeral. Christopher Thomas Sr., Juvie's pops, has something to say too. He mentioned that even though Melly didn't say anything that would get him in trouble, his body language and the way he carried himself spoke volumes. According to Thomas Sr., Melly seemed all chill and unbothered during their FaceTime chat, and that made him even more suspicious. Here's the deal. Thomas Sr. thinks Melly off sack and Juvie because he wanted to keep all the cash they would have racked in from selling the Y&W brand. Supposedly, there was a fat $500,000 deal on the table. Melly and Sack were supposed to get $200K each, while Juvie would have scored $100,000. But Chris Sr. suspects that Melly got greedy and wanted to hog it all for himself. I think Melly didn't want to give them guys nothing. He wanted to be the only one to shine. And then they came to town next day and gave uh, the, the mothers 15000 the other mother 10000 So I, I thought to myself, if Sack was going to get 200000 Chris was getting 100000 Now, when it comes to the case, YNW Melly hasn't spilled too many beans. He's been keeping quiet about it. Personally, I ain't no judge or no jury. But I got to say, we need more digging and investigation to get to the bottom of this mess. Meanwhile, the fans ain't sitting idle either. They flooded social media with hashtag Free Melly because they straight up don't believe he's guilty. Truth is, not many folks out there think he did the dirty deeds. But we gotta stay patient and wait for the final verdict. The case is gonna roll on through the months of June and July, so it's gonna be a minute before we know what's what. Speaking of rappers facing the law, check out our other video called Times Rappers Outsmarted the Police. Peace.